Hey, this is Andrew, and in this video, we're going to look at implementing Amazon Personalize here. So I made my way over to Amazon Personalize. We'll go ahead and get started. And the first thing we're going to need is a data group. So I'm going to call mine my DG for data group. And you'll notice we have domains below at the bottom. This is going to determine our use case. We have e-commerce, video on demand, or custom. I'm going to go with e-commerce here today, which is kind of a reflection of what AWS would be utilizing this for. And the first thing we have to do is create our data sets. So import your data sets into Personalize, Amazon Personalize. We'll go ahead and drop this down. You'll notice that there are three uh, types of data sets that are uh, required of us. So um, I don't have any data, but what I'm going to do is go over to ChatGPT and say, uh, create a CSV of e-commerce uh, data that is for Amazon Personalize user, user data data set. And let's see if it can actually do that. Um, please focus on making the longest CSV as possible. Don't describe. Okay, so hopefully, it will just do that. So we'll give it that a moment there. I'll just pause and uh, show you if it does produce that or not. All right, it looks like it's created a data set for us. So it has 10,000 um, uh, here. The question will be, did it actually provide us the a structure that we need because we need user ID, item ID, and uh, timestamp. So I'm going to go ahead and download the CSV. All right, and I'm just going to go ahead and open this in Excel. And looking here, we have user ID, which is there. We don't have um, an item ID and a timestamp. So I think that's not going to uh, work out well for us because, um, I mean, first of all, this is like just categories, gender. This is like a person. This is not very useful. Well, actually, sorry, this says user ID. So maybe that does make sense. Yeah, that's user data, okay. That does make sense, because coming back to here, we have user ID, age, and gender, and so we have our user item data interaction and item data. Okay, so maybe that is totally fine. Um, so I'll go back here and we will ask for the other two. So now create a CSV uh, for the user item interaction data, uh, which should reference the data in the user data CSV you previously generated. Okay, so let's see if it does that. Let's give it a moment here. While this is going on, I want to uh, play, uh, store these so we can find them later. I'm going to go ahead and just open this in... Um, uh, GitHub code.dev. So I'm hitting period on my keyboard and this opens it up in um, an editor that does not have compute attached to it. So it's very easy to add files here. And so that way I'll bring uh, that file in here in just a moment. So we'll let this load up here. There we go. And so I'm just going to make a new folder in here called personalize. And um, I want to bring that file in. So let me just drag it in. I was just looking for it here. So here is the file. I'm going to just drag it here as such. So we there we have our Amazon personalized user, user data. And that is still analyzing it. I'm just going to rename this to user data. And we'll just give that a little bit of time to figure out what it wants to generate out, okay? All right, let's see if that has finished generating out. Since I made an error by generating the timestamps incorrectly, leading to a mismatch in array sizes for the data frame, let me correct this generation, the CSV file again. Um, I mean... I'm wondering if it's getting confused here, but we'll download this file and take a look. I'm not sure why it would tell us that it was having issues generating it out, but again, this is faster than if we had to um, uh, create this ourselves because it would take forever. I'm not sure what it would correct. Let's just take a look here, so that's fine. And uh, this looks okay. Is that timestamp correct? That's what I'm gonna double check here. Um, huh, because the one that shows up here is showing a Unix time timestamp. So I'm going to look this up here and just double check user item interaction data set. And let's look up that timestamp in Unix time epoch format. The timestamp has to be uh, 
for the last CSV file column for timestamp. And so hopefully that will uh, fix it. Not sure why it got confused there, not a big deal. We'll just tell it to fix that issue there, okay? Also while working on this, I probably should have done the item data first because the user item interaction data is between those two. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, the, the fact that I did it in that order. Um, but maybe it will be smart enough to do that. But anyway, we'll go ahead and um, download this one. And I'll take a look and see what that looks like here. So we'll go back over to here and drag this one in. And uh, I mean, I'm, I guess that's still a Unix timestamp, but I'm not sure why it has the period in there. So I'm not sure if that's going to cause an issue. Even though we did this in the wrong order, I am going to try and generate out the item. Uh, generate out the item data, CSV data set, uh, and it should reference the other two data sets required. Okay, so let's see if it can do that. All right, so it says we have our next one here. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that into our app here. And again, we, you know, this might not work if the data is incorrect because we are heavily relying on um, this to generate out here. But just looking at this, we have item electronics. This doesn't really look like items per se. I don't know, I don't really like this data. You know, we'll go back here and say, you know, please make item data Okay, let's start over. Generate out the item data. Hold on first, let's take a look here at the user data. That's interests. This item data sucks, okay. The item data should actually be items of the category, it's actually just showing categories as the item, which is not useful. Please try again. Okay, we'll try that again. All right, let's see if it's done a better job. I'm gonna go ahead and download this file and we are going to uh, go back over to our item data and uh, well, we'll upload this file so it's more actually useful. And is this one any better? Um, yeah, it's better. We see laptop board game, whereas the last one was just the category, which was not very useful. So we'll go ahead and delete this one. And so I'm hoping that this data just lines up. Again, I'm not sure if uh, ChatGPT at this stage is intelligent enough to do this, but you know, beats us having to do this manually and we don't need it to be perfect per se. I'm gonna make our way over to here. And so we're gonna have to um, Upload these. I'm going to just re-download them because I have a bunch that are in my uh, downloads. And I'm getting a bit confused, which are the ones I want. Just give me a moment to uh, delete those. Okay. All right. And so I'm going to go ahead and just rename this to its appropriate name, which is supposed to be what again? I already forgot, I lost my slide here to know what, uh, user item interaction data. Okay, so I'm gonna just rename this to user item interaction data. Again, don't know if that Unix uh, uh, code is gonna mess up because it has the um, sub seconds, uh, like milliseconds on there or whatever it is. So we'll go ahead and download these. And I'm gonna go over here. I'm just going to go ahead and create those individually. So we'll try this one first. Um, oh, we can bring in from Data Wrangler. Data Wrangler to import data from 40 plus sources. Well, that sounds cool, but I'm not gonna do that today. Import data directly to Amazon. Uh, so my item data, create a new domain schema by modifying the existing schema. Um, okay, so I'll just say my item data schema. I'm gonna go back here. Uh, I need schema JSON for importing the data set for item data, please. Let's see if it can produce that. That'd be really nice. Okay. 
type records, items. This one says interactions. Import item interaction data. Hold on, let's go back here. Oh, so this one's required. Well, I'll start with this one first. I don't think it really matters the order. So I'll say my item data, my item schema. So it doesn't even have a price on it. Or does it? Let's go back to here and take a look. Does this one have a price? Oh, it does. Okay, that's fine. I'm not sure why the price has this many decimal points, but whatever. Again, if it works, it works. Um, we'll go ahead and copy this. This looks correct to me. Okay, and we will place it in there. We'll go ahead and hit next. It says schema is missing fields category. Mm-hmm. Let's go back here. Is maybe that's like a required field and we can't just name a category? Because it says L1. This meets this requirement. We can adjust the schema by L1. Okay, but what about the data? Like, is the data going to be wrong? I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. Which is interesting because, like, when I read it in the docs, it just said category. So I guess there's a little bit of adjustment. Maybe they've added levels to categories. Uh, we'll go take a look here and see what's changed. L1, category, categorical metadata. It's not saying anything in here. There's no like category L1, schemas. Well, whatever, if that's what it wants, that's fine. We haven't uploaded the data yet, but this is confusing because now it makes me think that we need to have that there. So I'm going to go back to our item data. I'm just going to uh, change this to be category L1. So you're going to assume stands for level one. Um, and then I just want to go ahead and delete this file locally. Again, I know you're not seeing this, so I'm just saying this is what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and delete it and then download this, save this, and then download this file again. Maybe we have to put these in S3. Uh, we'll find out here in just a moment. So go ahead and hit next. And yeah, it's telling us it wants it here, incrementally import data with APIs. No, I don't want to do that. So just say my data set items. And so we need an S3 bucket. We'll go over and just quickly make that. We'll make sure that we create it also in CA Central just because this is running CA Central sometimes. Things don't like to go cross region. So we'll go here and we'll just say um, personalize data set. I'll just put some numbers here on the end. And I'm going to go down below and just create that bucket. And then we'll go into here. I'm just going to check here. Yeah, it's the whole path. So I'm going to say S3 colon forward slash forward slash. It's going to be item data.csv. I'm going to go back over to this bucket. We're going to upload the item data CSV here. And say upload. And so that is going to go ahead and upload. Uh, we'll let it create a new service role, whatever it needs. This is for a very specific bucket, so we'll just go ahead and do this. Common delimit arns are not supported, so we don't need to do anything uh, interesting there. We'll go ahead and create this role. That actually was the nicest role, service role creator I've ever seen in my life. Why can't more services be like that? Do we have a problem? This is an old error. We'll say start import. Insufficient privileges for accessing S3. I'm not sure why, as we just provided it access. So, because we just created a service role. We'll go take a look here. If you haven't already followed the step of setting up permissions here, um, do we have to create a bucket policy? We did create the service role. And here that would allow us to get access to that. You know, we didn't update these. At least I don't think we did. Uh, let's see, bucket policy, bucket policy. Attach a bucket policy. So if you haven't already, do this. Attach a, uh, the service rule. Attach a bucket policy containing your data files so personalized can access them. We'll go down to here. So maybe this is what we need here. So we'll go over to our bucket. We'll try this one more time. We'll go to permissions. We'll edit our bucket policy. We'll paste this in. And uh, we want to have this on here. I like how they place that right there. So it's very easy for us to grab that 
Good. That looks good to me. And it's to the personalized Amazon.com. So we don't have to specify like something in particular. It usually tells us to, it warns us saying like, hey, you should do source, source account ID, but it didn't seem to complain there. We'll go ahead and try this again. We'll say next. Um, it looks like, okay, so it didn't, it didn't make us start over. It actually pre-populated. That is a great feature. I like that. Okay, fills it in. Good. And so now it's importing that data set. We'll go over here to data sets. And it looks like there's no issue here. So that is good. That's pretty good so far. I'm going to go back over and take a look at our user data. So here's our user data. I think this is fine. We'll go ahead and um, ask ChatGPT make a schema JSON for our user data data set to import into Amazon Personalize. I really like that we can use LLMs to do this stuff because before it was so hard to stage examples like this. But uh, we'll go back to our overview here as it had this nice setup and we're gonna go ahead and import the user data. We'll say my user data. And then we'll say my user data schema. Not sure why we have to name our schema, but that's fine. We're gonna go back over to um, here and we'll see if it has our schema here. I wonder if the category here has to match. So if we go back over to here, this says, no, there's no category, we said interest, that's totally fine. Come on, you can do it. We'll just give it a second here to finish. There we go. So we'll go ahead and copy this. Not carefully reading, so hopefully we don't have any issues here. Looks good to me. We'll go ahead and hit next. And we need to upload this to our bucket. So we'll go to our objects here. I'm going to drag in our user data. Again, I'm just doing this one at a time because you know if we run into issues, that'd be annoying. And so I'm gonna grab this and we'll go over here and just say forward slash user data CSV. That is good. We still have that IAM role we created from earlier. So that is good. Say my uh, data user data import and we'll say start the import it looks like that worked out with, without issue we'll go ahead and do our item interactions now this is the one where i feel like we would run into issues because we generated it first but uh yeah we'll see what we can do also i just want to look at the uh numbers here this goes up to ten thousand. okay so yeah this, this should be fine all right so what i'm going to do is go ahead and Download, no, we already downloaded that one. I need to just upload it into our bucket. So we'll go back to our bucket here and I'll upload our user item data interaction and I'll ask it to uh, write a schema, JSON for our user item data interaction. What's it called? User interaction data, data set file for import into Amazon personalize. So we'll go ahead and do that. And we'll go and set this one up here. So I'll say my item interaction data set, my inner item interaction schema. And we'll go back over to ChatGPT. We'll wait for this to finish to generate out. All right, so hopefully that's correct. User ID, item ID, timestamp, uh, event time, event value. Uh, let's go back and take a look at our data. Yep, that's what it matches. So hopefully that is um, good. So go ahead and paste that in here. Notice this one says interactions. We'll go down below, hit next. And so now we will go ahead and bring on over this. Oh, I guess we didn't finish the upload here. No big deal. This one's a little bit longer. So I'm just going to go ahead and click into it and grab its full uh, name here, since I don't feel like uh, writing it out by hand. Um, it has a bunch of junk in here we don't need. We want the S3 one. Can, does it have the S3 link? Yeah, here. This is the one I actually want. There we go. We'll go down below. Hit start import. My item interaction import job. We'll go all the way down below. Hit start import. Failed to create the data import job for interaction data set. 
Input CSV has rows that do not conform to the data set. For the item interaction data set, uh, it says it does not conform. What is wrong? Let's see if you can just tell us, because it's the one that generated it out. I'm going to quickly take a look here and see what could be the issue. Mm, looks okay to me. And we had periods in the other one, so that should be less of an issue as well. I mean, that's the one thing I thought we'd have an issue with. Requires timestamp field to be Unix time format. Ensures that the timestamp is this. Really? Because we read it and it said Unix timestamp. So go back to the documentation. It could be the documentation's wrong, as AWS has been getting uh, a lot worse over time with docs. We'll say timestamp here. It says the timestamp in Unix time epoch format. Okay, we'll say update the item interact the item user interaction user interaction timestamp to not have the decimal place well, let's see if it can do that because I'm thinking that maybe this is the issue here okay um, it's not necessarily invalid but it's just Maybe that's causing issues for it. Let's just also count one to one, two to two, three to three, four to four, uh, wait, four to four, five to five. All right, we'll go ahead and download this one. I'm just gonna quickly open it in Excel. Oh, frick, it closed. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we'll go here. Look at the timestamp. And now it's just like the timestamp without the decimal. So it might be that sub-decimal point that's messing it up. Again, not 100% certain. But we'll go ahead and adjust it. So I'm going to go back to our bucket. And we'll go here. I'm going to just grab this name here. I'm going to go to my downloads. Rename this file here. And hopefully that is our issue. Okay, so we'll go ahead and upload this new one. And I want to go into this file. And we'll grab that S3 URI if it decides that we need to enter it again. So this looks fine. We'll hit, hit next. The link is the same. Nice. We'll start the import. We'll see. And so that's what it was, okay? So that was just, again, a hunch for me because I had a feeling that, that it might be that case. So it says two of three are active. Let's give this a refresh. It should be three of three. Maybe it's still importing. I don't understand why it says two of three. Oh, it's in progress. Okay, so we'll just wait for that to finish, okay? All right. All right, so it looks like our data sets are complete. So we... Uh, are through that stage of it. So the next thing we're going to need to do is actually get recommendations. Um, I wonder if we could do this here. Recommenders allow you to get recommendations for specific use cases. Um, not sure if I want that. There's a lot of functionality in this thing and I just want to keep it really simple and um, I just want to go ahead and query the data. So what we'll do is we'll go back to our repo here, and I'm going to actually have to open this up uh, in something that has compute behind it. But I'm going to go ahead and just say, save files used for personalize. And we'll just make sure we add all those. All right, there, I think it's synced. I'm just going to make sure it's synced. Okay, and so what I want to do is just go back to this repo. Close that out there. I'm going to open this up in Gitpod. Use whatever you want to use. Mine's already pre-configured to work with the um, AWS CLI, the SDK, because it has um, access keys and secrets loaded into it. 
We'll just give this a moment here to start up. While that's going, I need some code. I really don't want to have to figure this out from scratch. It's not particularly hard, but uh, let's just see if we can do it. So uh, write me code for Python that will uh, use get recommendations for Amazon Personalize. I usually like to use Ruby, but I figure we should use Python since people really like Python. But I know that's the function that we need to utilize, so hopefully it can give us some code. Worst case, if it doesn't, we'll just go to the Boto3 API library and take a look there. Um, but I'll just give that a moment uh, to generate out. Also, that's something we haven't done is we have yet to create a campaign. If we don't create a campaign, then I don't believe the information will be accessible. Let's get, go back to our overview and see what shows the next step. Oh, right, we have to do an analysis run. So run a data analysis to learn about your data and what actions you need to optimize. So we'll go ahead and do that. So that's pretty straightforward. So we will just uh, wait for that to complete. Completely forgot about that stuff. But as that is going, we can prepare our uh, code over here because this is going to take a little bit of time. So I'm going to go back over to ChatGPT and it looks like it's finished generating it out. This looks pretty good. Um, not exactly how I would do it. We might make some adjustments here and we're going to go over to personalize. I'm just going to make a new file, which is a main.py. All right, I'm going to just paste this in here and we'll go ahead and whoop, paste, that, paste that on in here. I'm going to just take this out because that's pretty self-evident. Uh, yep, campaign and, and user ID is good. Um, we might want to pass item ID depending on what we're doing. Uh, we'll leave the context in here just in case. But we don't really have any like error handling on here. So mm, I guess it's fine. This is fine, I suppose. So we will have to wait a little bit of time here. Uh, for this to finish generating out. While we're waiting, I'm just going to go ahead and just keep preparing this. We'll get our requirements.txt in here. And we'll just put in Boto3. And I think it's uh, pip install. Well, we'll cd into it. pip install requirements.txt. What is it? Hyphen T? I always forget. Hyphen T, hyphen R. Uh, we'll just go man pip and read it. I always forget this one. Where is it? Requirements. I never can remember this. Pip install requirements txt. I, I use like hyphen t or hyphen r. It is hyphen r. Okay. Hate it so much. Like what is the... Uh, what does the R stand for? I guess requirements, maybe. I don't know. Um, we'll go ahead and do that. So that will install Boto3, which is the only library we need. It will bring everything else along with it. Um, we'll go back to our main.py. And we'll have to fill these in in just a second. We'll go back over here. And I'm not sure how long this will take. Run data analysis. How long pers uh, Amazon personalize? Take 50 minutes. Okay, so I'll see you back here in 50 minutes, okay? I am back. Uh, let's take a look here and see if it's done. It has run successfully. My environment's still around, that's great. So we can go ahead and view the analysis. I'm not sure what interesting information we'll get out of that, but we'll take a look here. Um, okay, user data set, 10,000 items. Okay, so, all right, not a whole lot of inf uh, interesting information, but we'll go back to our overview and continue on. So he says, use the e-commerce recommender, which sounds good to me. I'm going to go ahead and use recommenders to generate in real time. Do I have to create one to do this? I guess so. Um, so recommenders get recommendations for specific e-commerce use cases, get recommendations for items that customers have viewed based on the item you specify, bought together, best sellers, most viewed. Sure, why not? Oh, we got to actually put names in here. Um, my views, my bots, 
my bests, my most views. We'll say my X views up here, whoops. And my recommends. Okay, we'll go ahead and do next. Item interaction data set, five of five columns. Okay, it's training on all of them. Uh, minimum recommendations per request. Sure, we'll leave it as one. Yeah, if there's metadata, let's go ahead and use it. Um, I see, so for each of these, we actually have to correlate it to something in particular. So I guess the question is like, does the stuff that I have actually uh, sign up with this? Because this would probably be like, if it's best seller, then this would be rating, right? Or something else. So I don't think that um, I have the right data to fill this out. I do not want to go back and upload the data. So we'll go ahead and just let it choose uh, this one, even though it doesn't make sense. And we'll just go through and see if that uh, is an issue. I mean, it has it already selected. Can we just go forward through this? Next. Oh yeah, we can. Okay, great. But yeah, I think um, you'd have to really be very specific with that uh, that stuff. So we'll go ahead and create those recommenders and we'll just wait here a moment, okay? All right, let's see if these are done. I'm gonna give this a hard refresh here. And they're still creating, so I guess I'll wait a little bit, okay? All right, I'm back. And uh, <laughs> I just uh, found a whole dead tree and Dragged it, it was a lot of work. But anyway, now that uh, I finished all that, now we can take a look here and look at our recommendations. So these are created. So that makes me think that our next step is to run the query, but uh, let's see, we did this part. We created our recommenders. I don't care about filters, which are optional. I don't care about metric attribu uh, attributions, which are optional. So what we need to do is create a campaign, which is the next step. So the question is, where is the campaign? Here it is, campaigns. We'll create a campaign, my campaign. We'll choose our solution. Choose the solution for the campaign. Okay, so we haven't created a solution yet, so we'll go back here. Mm, solutions and recipes, yeah, that's the next step. So we'll go ahead and create a solution. We'll say my solution. And we have item recommendation. And so here we have recipes. So AWS similar items might be a good idea here. So we'll go ahead and choose that. Uh, we have our item data set. It's choosing the information here, so that is good. Hyperparameter optimization. I mean, that's a good idea, but I'm not really interested in that today. Hyperparameter uh, hyper optimization is where it, it, it will do multiple iterations and fine tune it for you, but um, I don't care about that. All the defaults seem okay. Um, technically, we do have event type information. We're going to just skip that for now. I think it says the names here. Enter the event type, enter the event value. And this is event type and event value. I guess we just do that, see what happens. We'll create our solution. And it doesn't like our additional options there. So I'm gonna go back and we will try that again from scratch. So create our solution, my solution, item recommendation, it was similar items, we'll go ahead next. Um, it seems to be defaulting, we'll go ahead and hit next, we'll create the solution. There we go, now we can make our way over to our campaign. We'll create our campaign, we'll say my campaign. We'll choose our solution. Uh, I'm gonna ignore the metadata stuff for now. Yep. Oh, must have an active solution version, whatever. We'll go back to our solutions, I guess then. We'll click into it. I mean, oh, it's in progress. So we'll have to wait for that to create, okay? All right, after a very long wait, looks like our solution version is now uh, deployed. We'll go ahead and create our campaign as we've been Trying to do a few times here, we'll say my campaign. We'll choose our solution. We'll go down below, create the campaign. And now we have our campaign R. And let's go back to our code, assuming <laughs> this is still around, which it's not. I'm gonna open this workspace 
and spin it back up. So just give me a moment here to get our stuff back up here. All right, so my uh, environment is trying to do its best to spin up. I think what I'm going to do is just um, commit my code here and just uh, say personalize code. I'm just going to save this and then have it relaunch so that it is in a state that is easier to work with. So hopefully I did not lose my code. I'm just going to double check, make sure that it's there before I proceed. I'm going to go to personalize here and I do have it. So that is good. So I'm going to go ahead and just close this out and start up my cloud developer environment again. I'll be back here in just a moment. All right, so our environment seems to be back in working condition here. I'm gonna go ahead and type personalize and we'll do pip install hyphen r requirements.txt. And so that should install our requirements. I'm gonna go over to our code here into our main.py. And there's a couple things we need to replace your campaign arn. So that will be the first value that we need, which is right here. Interesting that it's an ARN, but that's what they want. And then we need some kind of user ID for recommendations. So I'm gonna go into our user data and it doesn't really matter. This is all the user IDs. We'll go down here, choose 127. So whoever that is, that's who we're using today. Hopefully they have enough data for us to work with here. So we'll go here and put in 127. This is implying that it's a string. So I imagine that's what it's supposed to be. Okay, so this should be enough. Um, so let's go ahead and run this. So we'll do Python uh, main.py. And here it says, what's our issue? It has an issue with this here. I'm just gonna put, I'm just gonna change this to client and client. That's not going to fix our problem, but it is going to make this a little bit more readable. It helps me when I'm trying to do stuff here. I don't want to afford to, I'll leave it with four indentation. We should really change it to two because that is what you're supposed to use for uh, Python. And that's what the, or the creator of Python wants you to use. Not necessarily that you have to. I'm going to try this again. Okay. Error occurred when getting called, does not exist or not an active campaign yet. I think the issue is that in my code, I need to set the region. So I'm gonna see how we can do that. AWS uh, SDK. And there we have it for Bodo 3. And I'm just wondering if in here we have the option for region. I don't see that there, but we might be able to do that on the, um, uh, the client. Okay, I don't work with Boto3 every day, but I'm sure we can figure that out. Set region in Boto3. Yeah, so it'd be this config that we'd have to do. Bring this in here. And uh, I'm only interested in CA Central 1. Whether to use Signature 4 is up to them, but I'm just gonna take these out. This is all I really want here today. I imagine we have to do a little bit more than this. Yeah, the configuration goes in here as such. So hopefully that is going to work here for all the clients. Okay, we'll, take, we'll just type in clear here. We'll try this again. Uh, my campaign does not exist. Okay, so I'm gonna go and take a look here again. I mean, it says CA Central 1, so that must be the case. We'll go into our campaign. Oh, is it still making it? Wow, this thing takes forever. Okay, I guess we'll just wait for the campaign to create, okay? All right, so uh, our campaign has now vanished, which is not a good indicator. You don't want your campaign to vanish on you here, so it must, oh no, there it is, okay, sorry. <laughs> it, it was gone, so maybe it was just in between the state of in progress to active, but now it's back, so that is, uh, reassuring. Um, apparently we can just test our campaign right here. Again, I want to programmatically do it because I think that's the best way to do it. Um, here it says um, recipe type related items requires a single item ID. So because we did related items, then I guess it needs to have that there. Um, would that go in the context? I'm not 100% sure. Let's go take a look at this particular code. I think we just had it open here just a moment ago. So we'll go back 
here and see if we can find that function. Because, yeah, that's what I thought. The item ID would go right here. Okay, so what we'll do is just go ahead and do this and just say item ID, and this will be item ID equals item ID. And we put comma there in the end, it doesn't really matter. And so we're going to actually need a item ID, I suppose. Um, I don't know if it has to be something that the user used, but I'm going to go ahead and just pull anything like here is a knife set. And wow, does this... No, I guess it's kind of okay. I'm just trying to think like some of these are not that as as unique as I was hoping they would be, but I guess it's totally fine. Never mind. I was about to complain. Anyway, so here is our item ID. And so hopefully that produces something a bit better. And so we are getting stuff back. So we're getting back the item ID, which is not the most useful information, but um, I'm not exactly sure what else we would get here. I'm going to just try to go ahead and print this whole object. Um, just do print on this. I wonder if we can just do this. It might not let us do that. We'll try this one more time. That's all we get back is the item ID. So I guess we'd have to do a little bit more work um, to extract that information out. So like we have our CSV, so we could match that up and see what the um, example items are. But I'm pretty satisfied that this is probably working. What we can do here, I'm just gonna save this, is let's just look up some of these items manually. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and t-shirt, not really. Yeah, so I wouldn't say it's the best matching thing, but I think that it really has to do with our data points and the fact that we have that event type and event value. What's more important is going through all the steps and understanding the components there. If you want to fine-tune this to get this to work as you need to, then uh, I think what we'd had to do is actually add more relevant um, relational data. And that event type event value was not a good parameter for related items, which we knew that that wasn't going to be great. So I'll say that this is a success. We'll go ahead and just save our code here if it will let me here. It doesn't seem to be letting me. In fact, this whole thing is freezing up. So it's going to give us a hard refresh here. Sometimes that happens. Um, and we'll call this good enough. I'm going to go ahead and just add personalized code. All right, and so now we have to go and tear this all down. And I have a feeling that this could take a while. But uh, we'll go ahead and just delete this. Would I use this solution personally? Probably not. I don't find that it'd be hard to build a, a recommendation engine or personalization engine. Um, the effort that this took to train and set up, I don't know. But it's used by AWS, so maybe um, if you have the exact same use case. But yeah, we're going to have to wait quite a while for this to delete. So I'll be back here when this is done, and we'll keep tearing this down. So yeah. All right, so I gave it a refresh, and it's gone. I actually only had to wait a few minutes. So it actually wasn't that bad. Oh, no, it's still going. So I guess the thing is that sometimes that this is just misleading. So I guess we'll be waiting here a while. Sorry. I thought it was done. All right, let's see if this is actually done. We'll give this a nice refresh here. And yes, it's finally gone. So that is um, our campaign's gone. So we'll go to our recommenders. And we will delete our recommenders since we do not need them. And we'll go ahead and delete this one. And we'll go ahead and delete this one. And we'll go ahead and delete the next one. You got the idea of what's going on here. We'll delete this one. Okay, so those are all now deleting. They'll, they'll probably take a little bit of time. We'll go over to our data sets. We will go ahead. Yeah, can we delete our data set? Maybe we gotta click into it. Delete. Yeah. There we go. Is referencing a recommender. Okay, so the recommenders have to go before we can do anything else. Also, we didn't get rid of our recipe and our solution. We'll get rid of this as well. Delete. They probably won't even let us delete those recommenders. Maybe until the. Oh, well, maybe they will. So we'll just have to wait a while. So yeah, I'll be back and uh, when these are deleted, just wait a long time for this. All right, let's see if our uh, solutions recipes are done. They are good. We'll go over to data sets. Our data sets, uh, well, we couldn't delete them before because we have to wait for our recommenders to delete. And these are still deleting, so I'm gonna have to wait for those to finish, I guess. All right, so are my recommenders deleted? I think so, excellent. We'll go ahead and delete our data sets now. Uh, so we'll go in here and delete this one. Delete, we will delete this one. 
delete. We'll delete this one. Delete. Okay, so hopefully that doesn't take too long. All right, while that's deleting, I'm not sure we can delete this yet, but we'll go take a look here at our um, data, data set groups. Again, I don't think it'll delete just yet, but I'm gonna try anyway. Nope, not yet. Okay, so we'll just wait for those data uh, data sets to delete. Now it says they're all deleted, so let's go ahead and try this again. There we go, we'll wait for that to delete. Okay. All right, so our data set is deleted, so everything is cleaned up, and there you go. That's the end.